here's how I'm viewing this entire weekend. Craziest weekend I've ever seen in the history of the National Football League. And last year's wild card weekend was pretty wild. But here we go. These are the events that I saw over the weekend. And you tell me if this isn't the craziest in total NFL weekend you've ever witnessed. Starting with the Sunday night football game between the Washington Commanders and the New York Giants. Both of them coming in with the same record because they tied two weeks ago. And the Washington Commanders are the team that's only lost once in their last eight games. And the Giants are dropping like a stone, having just been curb stomped by the Philadelphia Eagles. And Kayvon Thibodeau shows up in FedEx Field with a package, Dude. with a delivery. And yes, an A++ game-wrecking ability is what he showed up with last night to give the Giants a lead that it looked like they were about to lose. In the final throws of this game, Taylor Heineke goes up top to Jahan Dotson, and all of a sudden he flips the field and gives the commanders a shot to win it, and Brian Robinson scores the touchdown to give him a shot at a two-point conversion to tie it, except there's a flag on the field because Terry McLaurin is called for not being on the line of scrimmage in an illegal formation after he says he checked with the official, and it sure looks like he looks at the official to see, am I on the line of scrimmage, and gets the green light from the official, who then throws the flag on him. Wipes out that penalty to only set the stage for a pass interference call that should have been called and wasn't, because Chris Samuel tried to play superhero. (laughs) The only problem is he was wearing Darnay Holmes as a cape. (laughs) I mean... This is what we call pass interference, and it was not called, and it should have given them another shot with Brian Robinson from the one. Instead, it's the Giants who win it, and they're now 8-5-1, and one, and the Commanders are 7-6-1. and one. That is a huge development. We also saw on Sunday prior to this, the Texans forced the Chiefs to overtime and lose the coin toss and get Mahomes off the field and in their first snap, fumble the ball to the Chiefs, who then one snap after that get a walk-off 26-yard <laughs> scamper from Jarek McKinnon. And that's how the Chiefs win the West. They punch their ticket to the playoffs and start printing home playoff tickets just when you thought the Texans could finally do it after, after almost doing it to the Cowboys. The Chiefs say... Thank you. And head off to Kansas City as the AFC West champs. The Chargers had the Titans right where they want them until the Titans tied the game late. And the Chargers, with no timeouts left, sent Justin Herbert out on the field. And Justin Herbert throws a seed with no timeouts left for 35 yards to Mike Williams, who grabs it in traffic and sends out eventually Dicker the kicker to win another one for the Chargers as Justin Herbert takes the Chargers to the sixth seed and becomes the first player with 4,000 yards passing in his first three seasons as a professional ever. Ever? Ever. Wow. Meanwhile, earlier in the day, the New York Jets start Zach Wilson because Mike White's got 15 million broken ribs because the <laughs> Jets fans can't have anything nice to play with. They're up despite Zach Wilson making the tough throws and still can't make the layups. They're up by three on the Detroit Lions. I like that analogy. And Jared Goff on fourth and inches. From right around midfield, a minute 49 to go. What does he do? They throw it. Why not? Because Brock Wright, who sounds like he's straight out of boogie nights, (laughs) for 51 yards untouched for most of the way. Where's the Jets' defense? Nowhere near Brock Wright. And the Detroit Lions, with that grab, Jared Goff throws just his, wait for it, second touchdown pass outdoors (laughs) all year. And the Lions have won six and seven, and they're at 500 in the month of December for the first time in five years. But just when you think that's the crazy part, the Jacksonville Jaguars say, wait a minute, we're not only beyond relevant, we're just as hot as the Lions, and we may be the team in the AFC, like the Lions in the NFC, 
are the team you don't want to face right now. Because they came back on the Dallas Cowboys. They follow up their pounding of the Titans by falling down 27-10 to to the Cowboys at home and saying, not today, anyway. As they score back-to-back touchdowns, Zay Jones has three touchdown passes, and Trevor Lawrence is playing like a top-five quarterback in the last month and a half of this season. Ever since he threw that interception in London, turned it around. 15 touchdowns, one interception in his last month of football. And the Jacksonville Jaguars come back from 17 down and win in overtime on a pick six. 52 yards, Rayshon Jenkins takes the ball off of Noah Brown, who had it hit him right in the chest as he's going down. Touchdown, Jaguars. And with that result, and the one here in Los Angeles with the Chargers beating the Titans, the Jaguars are just one back of the Titans with three weeks to go, and they play Tennessee. They have a shot at winning the AFC South big time. But comebacks, that's part of the weekend. You know what? (laughs) Because it started Saturday, didn't it? Saturday (laughs) night game. Bills down eight to the Miami Dolphins, who, by the way, showed up with a run game and were physical, and they showed up in the cold, and they ran it down the Bills' throat and still got touchdowns from Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, and they were up eight until, you know, Josh Allen does Josh Allen things, and the lake effect snow comes in in western New York, and suddenly we got a classic snow game that the Bills not only come back to tie, but win on a field goal thanks to the space being cleared for Tyler Bass by an offensive line using their hands as shovels. (laughs) Holy cow! That was unbelievable. Bills win. They punch their ticket to the playoffs. They now have a three-game lead over the Miami Dolphins. They're going to win the AFC East, and they're sitting there as a one seed. With that win, every win they have keeps themselves right there in the one seed. But you want to talk comebacks? <laughs> How the hell did the Minnesota Vikings pull this off on the Indianapolis Colts? I will never know. A 33-point comeback. Down 33 nothing. Down 36-7 to with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And the, well, hold on a second. If I had told you that there would be a comeback coming, you'd say, get out of here. If I had told you, not only would there be a comeback coming, but in the second half, in the second half, the Minnesota Vikings, in coming back, would punt twice, throw an interception, and turn it over on downs and still come back. <laughs> Makes it even crazier. But that's what happened. And the Indianapolis Colts, I mean, I don't know if we've ever seen anything like this before yeah. because – the Indianapolis Colts went up 33-0 after losing their previous game, giving up the last 33 unanswered. We'll never see that again. Wait, wait a wow. And according to sports radar data, since 1930, only two teams have been down by 30 or more and came back to win. The two teams are the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs, the Houston Oilers in 1993, in the divisional playoff series, down 35 to 3, they came back and won it. And this Minnesota Vikings team. Wow. Quarterbacked by Kirk Cousins. And we all know who the quarterback of that Buffalo Bills team down 32 to set that record was Frank Reich, meaning the Indianapolis Colts took Frank Reich's job and then his record. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stutter. Pretty you good. didn't. Facts. Pretty good. And the Vikings, they were going to be the three seed if they didn't have that comeback. They were going to watch the Niners leapfrog them. Yep. But they're still the two seed. I don't know how the hell they did that. The comeback bug was biting so bad it bit Tom Brady. Tom Brady, oh, entering yesterday, had been 89 and 0. In games in which he led by 17 points and led this game 17 nothing, 
And the Bengals, who couldn't move the ball a lick, got three at the end of the first half. And that was the end of that. In the second half, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers turned it over on downs, followed by an interception, two fumbles, one by Brady, an interception, a punt, and a cosmetic touchdown. And they lost 34-23 to as Joe Burrow and the Bengals did it again, winning again. A big game on the road, certainly when they had their hands full with the Bucks showing up in the first half like they showed up in Munich, playing all three phases well. And by the way, one of those blown moments was Giovanni Bernard not knowing the fake punt was coming to him direct snap. I don't know what the hell's going on in Tampa, but Tom Brady follows up his first career loss to a rookie quarterback in a game. He throws an interception after which a linebacker from the opposition asks him to autograph it. With the first loss of his career in 90 games in which he led by 17 points. And just when you think the NFL world is off its axis, a Bill Belichick team now owns the most situationally boneheaded play in the history of the NFL because just when you thought the Vikings coming back from 33 down was the one thing that you've never seen before in the NFL this weekend, the Patriots decided to grab everybody's beer and hold it for them. The Raiders have, as you know, made an art form out of blowing double-digit leads this year, and it looked like they were set to do it again yesterday. A pick six, Ramondre Stevenson can't be stopped. They're up by seven. Keelan Cole scores a touchdown that is highly controversial. It sure looked like his foot was out of bounds. But after further review, play stands is called. Be that as it may, tie game, we're going overtime. Unless Mac Jones can work some magic. I do not know what the hell that was. It's so crazy, I don't think there's a nickname for it. Every play that we all know, the Miami miracle that happened to New England. What do you call this one? Uh, Hail Moron. Hail Moron is excellent. The only problem is Jacoby Myers has been, as you know, as a Patriot fan, the Patriot way, situationally brilliant, the guy you want on the field to put the team in position to win football games in the manner in which Belichick wants to win it. He's great. He has been nothing but the guy who slides out of bounds to make sure the clock keeps ticking and the guy who gets on the loose ball that everybody else stares at thinking it's an incomplete pass, but he knows it's a fumble. The last guy you would expect to take a lateral that you would least expect coming because the game is tied. <laughs> right. You don't need a Stanford band on the field. You don't need the pitchy, pitchy woo-woo that Scott Van Pelt calls it. You don't need it. The minute the play is dead, it's over. When it's dead, it's dead. Walk out of bounds, man. You're right there. And he's throwing it back to Mac Jones for what purpose? For him to maybe run it in from there because you can't throw it again once the ball passes the line of scrimmage. That's it. Like, was Mac Jones going to turn into Tyree Kill and then go 70 yards down the left sideline? But of all people, one of the greatest sack artists of all time is there to grab it. Chandler Jones, nice grab. And then a stiff arm <laughs> that not only stole Mac Jones's soul, but any of his future children's soul. Jesus. And I don't, I, good for him. And he said that, you know, it's oh, no. my bad. I should have tackled him. Are you kidding me? What are you expecting? The ball's coming your way. You're not expecting it to be picked off in front of you. And then the stiff arm of all the last <laughs> people. You want. I guess maybe what him and Max Crosby, the last guys you want to try <laughs> to have stiff arm you. And when you're not expecting a stiff arm or having to stop somebody. I don't know what the hell that was, but that was the hell going on weekend (laughs) of all time. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 